So last time we derived that the integral of a Gaussian over all of the real line of this form, e to the minus ax squared dx, was equal to the square root of pi over a. All right, uh, that's good. But now what I want to do in this video is I want to generalize this result. And I want to generalize it to the following case. So I want to take this and I want to try and generalize it to uh, some integral where we have e to the minus ax squared like usual. But now we also have some other terms. We have a minus bx and we also have a minus c. So this is very similar to the previous result, except now uh, where we're no longer integrating some parabola that's centered at zero. Now we're shifting where it's centered about. So this is still some Gaussian, but now it's going to be uh, centered somewhere else and it's going to be a little harder to integrate because of that. Uh, the trick that we're going to try and use or, or the thing that we're going to try and do is try and force this right here, this argument in the exponent to look something like it does on the left, because then we can just use this result on the left hand side and then we're set. And so how are we going to do that? Uh, well, one thing that we can do, which will which will help get us there is using uh, or, or is by completing the square. And so you might remember that completing the square, uh, the idea behind be behind completing the square is that if you have some some parabola or some quadratic function like this, you can always express it in terms of something that looks like this, that, that looks like some uh, alpha or some constant times x plus another constant, I'm calling beta squared plus gamma. And so, and so what, 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 what really happened here, really what we're doing is we're just sort of showing explicitly where uh, where that's where, where the where the parabola is centered that that's what beta is telling us and so you know and by, and by parameterizing in this way uh, we're, we're pulling that information out and then we have something that's starting to look a bit more like what we have on the left hand side here uh, so you may you may remember uh, at least when I first learned completing the square I, I learned some rules for how to you know oh alpha is equal to you know a or in this case minus a beta is equal to you know you just kind of rememberize the answers but here I'm gonna just quickly, you know, I, I didn't remember it before making this it, before making this video, and so I'm going to uh, derive it how I would if I had forgotten. And so, what, what, how how would I do that? Well, I would just say, okay, well, I mean, what, what do we have to do? We just have to match terms on both sides. And so, I'll start by expanding this out. All right, so you expand it out and then we just say, okay, well, all the terms on the left hand side have to match the terms on the right hand side. And so what do we learn from that? Well, we can start with x squared. We see that alpha is equal to minus a. Okay, what about beta? Beta is equal to, well, let's see. So we know that two alpha beta is equal to minus beta or mi minus b rather. And so beta is going to be equal to minus b over 2 alpha, well alpha is a, so this is just going to be plus b over 2a. Okay, great. Uh, last one is this gamma right here. We know everything else. Uh, with gamma, what's going to happen? We're going to have gamma being equal to, well we can solve for it. What do we get? Gamma is equal to minus c plus b squared all over 4a. Okay, uh, so that, that's, a, that's a step in the right direction, um, but what's next? All right, so, so now, now what we've effectively done is we've, we have a way of rewriting uh, this integral up here into this integral down here, into an integral minus infinity to infinity, e to the alpha x plus beta squared plus gamma dx. And there's some simplification that we can do right off the bat, right? And, and we could have done it all the way from the beginning if we'd really wanted to. We could have just said that, uh, well, wait a minute, this e to the gamma is a constant, right? There's no x there. We're not integrating with respect to it. So we can pull that out. And then we're left with just e to the alpha x plus beta squared dx. All right, that's progress. But what's, uh, what, what do we do with this term now? We have this, uh, we have something that almost looks like this. The only problem is that, is that x being x is being shifted by some constant beta. 
So how is that going to affect our integral? Well, uh, in this case, it actually won't affect our integral at all. So and let's think about why that is. So uh, what we want, so or I guess I'll say what we, what we have right now is some Gaussian that's centered at some point beta, right? And really what we would prefer is to have some Gaussian centered at the origin. Well, wait one second. The area under a Gaussian is the exact same as the area under a shifted Gaussian, right? Because the area under, under the curve hasn't, the hasn't uh, changed at all. We've just shifted the Gaussian to one direction. And that's something that we can also see uh, just through a change of variables. I mean, if we, if we do, you know, what would we do? We would say, all right, well, uh, u equal x plus beta, du equals dx. Our bounds of integration don't change because it's just shifting by a constant. Uh, so constant plus infinity doesn't do anything. And then what happens? Our, our integrating fact, our, 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 our Jacobian from our change of variables doesn't contribute anything. And so this ends up just becoming exactly the integral that we wanted. We have integral e to the alpha x squared dx. And, and, and well, yeah, so maybe I should be saying u. So e to the alpha u squared du and this is an integral and 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 so so you know let, let us recall so so you do have to care about the sign of only one term here right uh, we care about this sign of this a here or this alpha here because we we need this thing to be a gaussian we need this integral to, to converge here alpha is minus a uh, and and a is always got to be greater than zero for these uh, so uh, so, so this does actually converge. This, that, you know, right now it looks like it's going to blow up, but but it doesn't because it's it's negative in there. Um, so we've done it. We've gotten our integral into a form that we know how to solve times a constant that we know, and so that means that we can we can write out this whole thing. And I'll, I'll write it out down here. And what do we have? We have that our our integral is e to the minus a x squared minus b minus c dx. And what's this going to be equal to? Well, e to the gamma. So what's e to the gamma? It's going to be e to the b squared over 4a minus c times this integral right here. And this integral is exactly this guy up here. Square root pi over a. And so we've done it. We've, we took our, our result from last time. And with the little trick with integration, we were able to generalize it to a broader case, which is going to be useful for a wider group of problems.